my name is Dimitri. And today we're going to talk about the multi cloud infrastructure. We go over blockchain 101, it's just what blockchain is distributed, highly common buzzword. And what is it exactly? So if you haven't uh, heard about it yet, blockchain is essentially a it's distrib it's distributed ledger technology. It's You can think of it as uh, a large uh, Excel spreadsheet that has a record of who owns what um, and allows for transparent record keeping. So every user on the blockchain network can see or download the copy of the entire history of the ledger. Addresses are generated randomly. Um, However, modern blockchains uh, are even programmable. So you can upload entire pieces of code um, into these uh, cells of the ledger, you can say. Um, and then there's also an execution layer. So there, the blockchain uh, has a virtual machine which understands this language and is able to execute things um, in, in, the, in the virtual machine around it. So what does blockchain enable? Why is it even important? So blockchain makes trust transparent. Uh, in the real world, it helps eliminate things like middlemen and trust the third parties because you're dealing peer to peer, you're dealing directly with the other party without any inter intermediary. Um, and this is all possible through a large network of really, really powerful computers which or validators uh, which do the mining or validation. Um, it improves efficiency, lowers costs, um, and also accelerates uh, value transfer. So you can move assets digitally uh, all, around the, all around the world in seconds. Um, what it also does is preserves privacy and ownership of users' digital assets. Um, the records are immutable. Um, users are basically their own uh, entity holders, the no middleman. Um, it creates a new form of identity um, and, and the users are sole owners of their data. Uh, it's unlike, you know, third party silos or these big corporations that own the data, you own the data. Um, and majority of the networks today are low cost to use. So less than 1% of the transfer fee uh, to use. Looking at this more of a real world application, uh, you can, it, it applies to finance, you can apply it to identity, to real estate, to retail and to arts and gaming. Um, if you've been anywhere on Twitter recently, uh, you, you've seen this, uh, you know, the rise of NFTs, the rise of DeFi, and now it's moving into DAOs. So blockchain technology is disrupting every industry, and it will change the way we live our lives like internet email did in the 1990s. Now you may be thinking decentralized, what is decentralization? So what, what, what is the Web3? What is this concept of Web3? So Web1 was this read-only web. Web two was is the web that we know today. It's read and write, and web three is read, write, verify, um, and all. And it's it exists in uh, multi cloud in a in a distributed way. So it's not uh, in in one data center or controlled by one company. Um, it's controlled by the people who use it. So you can run a node. Um, companies can run nodes. Uh, any anyone who wants to participate and use the network can run the node. And, and this is one of the challenges that. Um, the blockchain foundations are facing today is how do, how do they make uh, their, their, their network as distributed and decentralized as possible. Um, so Web3 is a decentralized network secured by blockchain technology and it consists of these thousands of different nodes containing copies of, of the ledger. Some of them, uh, some, some uh, blockchains all have the same data. Uh, the other ones uh, are working on sharded data. So there's piece, a little bit of piece of here, a little bit of piece there. Next thing, you want to know what is a node? Uh, you think thousands of nodes, what is a node? Node is a, peer, uh, a piece of P2P software that maintains an up-to-date copy of the chain data, uh, of this ledger data. And that this data lives across multiple clouds, multiple computers, um, which allows the, uh, the content owners um, to bring control and ownership back to the users and powers the creator economy. So the, the problem we're faced with this new wave of, well, this next iteration of the internet or the web, let's call it, is that there are 4.6 billion internet users today. Um, and there's tens of thousands of, of these users being onboarded to web daily. So tens of thousands of users are trying to or attempting to or using uh, blockchain technology uh, or web three uh, on a daily basis. And this is a 70% increase in users uh, since 2020, since last year. 
is there infrastructure to support this? So this is something, this is a problem we identified uh, back in 2018. And we uh, come from you know, 20 years experience in uh, building data centers and managing thousands of servers. So this was like, this was a task for us. This is where, where we started Quick Node. What is Quick Node? So we are a Web3 infrastructure provider. We solve the problem of reading and writing to blockchains at scale. Now, today we built a platform that serves over 70 billion API requests per month, and we operate thousands of, work, of nodes worldwide. Now, to build, um, it, 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 it sounds pretty simple, but it, there's a lot of magic, a lot of complexity that goes into building a robust, reliable, highly available network. Um, you also might be thinking, why do we need access to nodes? So nodes are basically gateways to the Web3. They're used to access and append data to the ledger. So you want to... You, you would need to uh, speak to a node where you want to know the block number or the transaction info, uh, like an account balance, who owns what. Um, the newer blockchains have these things called smart contracts, which are essentially little programs that are uploaded into the blockchain, into the network, um, and they're executed um, as written. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. If that's the way it was written, that's the way it's executed. Um, and then obviously uh, you would need to communicate with a node to deploy smart contracts and to uh, send transactions. So back to making this robust network. How do we make, how do we make this work? We want uh, a network that's high performance, that's multi-cloud, multi-region, auto-scaling, low balance, and has automatic failover. You know, Web3 is a global phenomenon. And if we were building this out of one location in the world and sending all the traffic there, um, you know, if there's a transatlantic fiber cut or if there's an outage in that region, you're pretty much screwed. So you, you need all, all of these things uh, to create this new, um, this, the foundation of the, new, of the new web. Now making it work with DigitalOcean. So, you know, we want uh, the latest CPUs, we want SSDs and NVMe storage, multi-gigabit networks. Uh, we want things to be high value. We want them to be super simple to use. Um, Obviously, we want to be multi-region, so we need, uh, you know, we need to be in West Coast, U.S., East Coast, Toronto, London, Amsterdam, Frankfurt. We need to be everywhere. It's, it's the ubiquitous web. Um, it needs to be auto-scaling, so provision capacity via API. We have, like, these health monitoring uh, on the back end, which uh, monitors for things like latency, uh, for block height, um, for response time, and then scales the network up and down based on a number of parameters. Uh, having load balancers as a, as a managed service, also great. And having powerful networking tool, uh, tools uh, like DNS uh, management uh, is, is super important to have like, this auto failover, uh, auto failover network. So like I mentioned before, you know, if, if one region goes down, you can fail over to another region. Um, and, and this just makes for a much more robust, reliable product. Shout out to the Hatch program from DigitalOcean because when we were just a baby startup, we applied for Hatch. Um, and we were accepted and we were able to experiment and play around with all the uh, tools that, and products that Digital Ocean has to offer. And that allowed us to come up with this uh, really, really robust solution um, that we are using today. So here are the products that we used on DigitalOcean. Clearly, you need compute. So droplets, those host the node clients, uh, the peer-to-peer -peer pieces of software. Then we used uh, block storage, which stores the node data. Some of these blockchains are hundreds of gigabytes. Some of them are in the terabytes, especially when it comes to archival data, which is basically every single thing that happened on this particular blockchain since the very beginning. Um, we use spaces storage for our website content. Uh, we have some really cool guides. We'll get into that later. For networking, firewalls, making sure that uh, these nodes are secure, load balancers, and the DNS tools, being able to manage your own DNS uh, without having to go through customer support um, and having a really easy uh, control panel to manage DNS, also super important. And obviously for the developers, uh, having an API to be able to programmatically spin up, spin down uh, instances, things like uh, monitoring and obviously teams, so you can have your DevOps your, uh, your backend engineers um, all communicate uh, on, on, a, on a common platform. So the results. Uh, today, QuickNote supports 10 different blockchains. I'm sure some of these names look familiar to you. Ethereum, Bitcoin, um, Matic, Polygon, perhaps, Solana. 
uh, Phantom. Uh, we support 19 networks and we're adding more uh, every single month. Um, and our network is spread out through 10 regions worldwide. So this allows for uh, you know, this multi-cloud mindset, uh, multi-cloud deployment, worldwide coverage, because a person that wants the data from, let's say, uh, the Netherlands shouldn't have to hop over the Atlantic Ocean to your data center in New York to get that data. Um, there have been many studies around reducing latency and improving the snappiness of your, uh, your app and your product. That leads to user happiness, leads to better retention, uh, leads them to take to act like purchasing a product. So speed is super important. And that's at the core of our, of our product. Um, and we serve over 70 billion API requests per month through our global network. Uh, Quick note is used by and, and trusted and loved by over 10,000 companies and developers. Uh, you can, there's a link at the bottom of this slide, quicknote.com slash love. You can go and check out uh, what people have been saying us about Twitter, but it's super, super fulfilling to be able to build a product that people love. And this is a common theme we, we share with DigitalOcean is that we, uh, we create our product with love um, and we, we, we reciprocate that love and our customers and our users reciprocate that love. And just, it's fulfilling. Um, this is why we get up every day and do what we do. Now, if you want to go down the rabbit hole uh, with Web3 and blockchain, uh, check out our blog, check out our Web3 guides. Um, the, the guides is an awesome section to get started from th basic things like writing your first smart contract um, or some more advanced things, um, building your own block explorer from scratch. So there's, there's a lot of uh, useful tools there. Please follow us on Twitter. Uh, keep up with our progress. Um, if you get involved in Web3 or, or, or do a blockchain project, uh, more than likely at some point, you'll need to connect to a node. Um, so please think of us when that time comes. And sign up for our newsletter, which we send out every two to three weeks. Um, and that gives an update on the overall ecosystem, who's building what, what's the latest news, um, you know, which uh, dog coin might be, uh, you know, is hitting the headlines and, and, and crashing uh, blockchains. But anyway, it's, it's a really good source of uh, information. So that's the end of uh, my presentation. Um, quick note is the best developer experience on Web3. We provide reliable, high-performance infrastructure plus value-add services, which make blockchain development easier. So when you go and want to build the next great app, you will build it on QuickNode. Check our website and email us if you have any questions. Um, and also uh, here for Q&A, uh, if anyone has any questions right now, uh, we'll be answering them. Okay, so we got a question. It says, uh, do you all help with NFT space? Absolutely. We work with some of the biggest projects in the NFT space, uh, like OpenSea, like Rarible, uh, like ZRun. And if you go to quicknote.com slash love, you will see uh, a bunch of NFT projects that have launched on QuickNode that are running on QuickNode. Um, recently, there has been an explosion in NFTs on the Solana blockchain. Um, and we have helped um, some of the biggest projects uh, on there, like um, Salamanders, um, so, so, uh, uh, the Grim Reapers, uh, I, I forget uh, off, the, off the top of my head, um, Sol Solana Mex, but yeah, totally, totally. And if NFT is a huge, huge use case. Um, and just a little bit beyond that, you know, today it's uh, images and art and media, but soon NFTs will be a form of identity, uh, a form of certification, a form of merits. So you will have things like your passports and driver's licenses and uh, your, diplo your, your university diplomas uh, as an NFT uh, on the blockchain. Um, so there's, there's so much more potential for NFTs. Great question. Thank you for asking. Cool. Uh, if there are no more questions. Awesome. No more questions. Thanks, everyone. This was a class. Appreciate y'all.